the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has faulted the proposed legislation to prohibit sexual harassment in tertiary institutions across the country. ASU National President Biodo Guyemi stated this when he appeared before some lawmakers on Monday in Abuja. He spoke at a public hearing organized by the Senate on a bill to prohibit sexual harassment in tertiary institutions. The union president believes the new legislation will stigmatize lecturers, stressing that it is not necessary. He said that there are existing laws to address the problem of sexual harassment in various academic institutions. He asked the lawmakers to focus the attention on other problems in universities that needed immediate attention. The public hearing was attended by a wide range of stakeholders comprising students, as well as members of the civil society organizations, CSOs and pressure groups. Some of them disagreed with the position of ASU national president and described the bill as long overdue. They also called on the Senate to expand the scope of the bill to include students in primary and secondary schools. Earlier, Plus TV Africa spoke with co-convener of the Bring Back Our Girls group, BBOG, Aisha Yusufu, on this issue. Uh, well, the public hearing, um, it, it, a bit, it's long overdue, a law ex designed specifically to ensure that students are protected and uh, uh, airing uh, lecturers are, are found uh, guilty. It, it's really long overdue and it's something that uh, every one of us should ensure we work towards and ensure it comes to fruition. Because uh, over, the, over the years we have seen a lot of uh, students who have been victimized by their lecturers and uh, it, it keeps going on and on. Some people's lives have been truncated. Some people have had to leave university uh, just because of that. And it's something that, uh, that, that it's not acceptable and uh, we all should be on board and ensure that this law is passed. But the question will now beg, what, what constitutes as a sexual harassment? What, what are the elements of sexual harassment? I mean, what could be seen as sexual harassment? Everything that is sexual harassment is it when you ensure that uh, you hold people to ransom, you ask on sex for grades, you ask them for sex, some of them ask for uh, come over and be uh, the, the ladies to be with them. They ask them to do different uh, all sorts of things based on the power that they have over them. I mean, it's it's all harassment could be just you forcing me to hug you when I don't want to hug you. Exactly. It's all about my body and yes. who I am and the right that I have a right to my body. You don't. Nobody has a right to anybody's body. And and I see a lot of people who make this uh, statement about, oh, women should check what they're wearing. Women should not wear miniskirts. What's your business with what, what miniskirts they're wearing? You don't think that could constitute a sexual does, harassment to, for to people men? To, what, the what way people they, wear? You don't, you don't share that How opinion. is that sexual har harassment? It's their bodies and they decide to clothe it. I wear the hijab. The same right I have to, to wear the hijab is the same right another woman has to wear mini or not wear anything at all. It's her business. If you're a man, take your eyes off it. So because I have a... So it's just the way you're saying that some Somebody will say that because you have a car, you've bought a beautiful car, and then you're robbed, and they tell you that it's your fault for buying a beautiful car that, uh, uh, that attracted the attention of the robbers. We must begin to look at these things uh, the way they are. And of course, I'm saying, uh, we are hearing of the fact that uh, the, that public hearing, uh, the Senate uh, ASU president yes. comes out to say that uh, this law will stigmatize lecturers. He's not concerned about lecturers that are raping students that are under their care. He's concerned about them being stigmatized. Any rapist must be not only stigmatized, must face the wrath of the law, must be sentenced and prosecuted. And that's the list of the problem that should yeah. As, as we should be concerned about is stigmatization. They should be concerned about the safety of students that are in the care of this lecture. And that brings me to the culture of shame, where, where the victim is always shamed. There's, there's a culture of shame. How do we begin to change the narrative of this culture of shaming and blaming the victim? Uh, well, that is something that we all really must work on, on issue of, because that is always what happens in Nigeria. You find out that the victim is the one shame, while the perpetrator, nothing is done about the, especially when it comes to sexual harassment or as, as sexual molestation and, and all of that. And so one of the things we must understand is for women to speak out the more, because there are a lot of women who have been uh, molested, who have been uh, harassed, and they're not saying anything because of this fear. We must own our space. We must speak out. And of course, I do understand the fact that when you're talking about victims of sexual harassment, it's not only female. Male too have been victimized. There are male uh, men and boys who, who have also fallen prey to these uh, sexual predators. Yes. Whoever it is, I mean, we must shame the people and not the victims. And I think there's more, this, there's, this, there's this righteousness, we know this sanctimonious righteousness that we as citizens, Nigerians, we, we normally want to have. So you feel that, oh, it's the person's fault because they were, they were uh, sexually molested, but then it's not the 
the perpetrator's fault. And I think another thing also for us to have this uh, sex offenders register, anybody that is found there, their names should be there. By the time we begin to name and shame them, the, 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 this thing, the issue of naming and shaming the victims would go away. Uh, go away from the victims and would be rightly the way it should be right. on the perpetrators. We're out of time. I just quickly want to ask you, do you see this bill saying the light of day? Uh, well, I see it saying the light of the day if there is a political yes. will for it, for it to see the light of the day. Okay. And I think uh, every one of us must you know, be on ground and be very watchful and ensure that it, it does see the light of the day. One of the things that we have is that most times issue of sexual molestation is always, uh, uh, how do I put it, uh, made to be as if it's nothing. I have, for example, there's a lady who went on a solo, solo march to Kaduna State University. She was in AB when she was harassed, and some of these lecturers, when they were sacked, they were employed by Kaduna State University. She went on a one woman protest there and said that she too she's a victim. I know one of the things she did mention was the fact that her brother said to her, oh is it because of this small mistake that you're doing this? Somebody has been raped and you're talking about small, small mistake. mistake and so there are people who for them they want to see it as misdemeanor. It's really nothing because they know they too are perpetrators of the sexual harassment and we almost ensure that look the